Thomas Ergen, class of 1982. My family always pushed and pressed upon me that I had to go to college, and I'm very proud and thankful to be the first member of my immediate family to have graduated from a four-year college. Uh, so college was never an option for me, it was automatic. Um, and so I'm thankful that the school system had um, kind of like an honors program that allowed, I hate to use the word gifted, but talented students, students with academic aptitude, um, I was in the same class with students from probably the fifth grade all the way through high school. And I will say that the vast majority of that class, we all went to college. And I, thinking back on them, that was a really good program because I was surrounded with people, with like-minded people who had aspirations beyond high school. Um, that, quite frankly, I, may, I did not have those aspirations until someone else told me the dream like that. My family told me to dream about going to college. That was never my dream automatically. And then to be in school every single day and to have that dream and that expectation reinforced. So I had friendships, had peers that were on the same path as me from middle school, junior high school, high school. You know, so we were in three or four classes every single day. Um, and so that was very formative for me and very informative as well. So. I really appreciate Lawrence for doing that. I'm sure other schools did it as well, but I only know about my high school, my, my county. So that to me was a really good program to have us engaged from middle school all the way to high school. Uh, I'm a math major, and so being in the, involved in a five-year math program back then started with algebra in the eighth grade instead of the ninth grade. So being able to do something I loved for five years instead of four years. And then you had some honors courses. There are probably more now, but when I was here, we had honors English, you know, so I did that for four years. And then you had the science track, which you end up doing physics your 12th grade of high school. So I appreciate the fact that they had things to challenge us academically to help prepare us for life beyond high school. The, the spark that I have now um, I guess it was mostly dormant in high school. I, I, I was focused in high school on my life was I was going to college, I'm going to graduate college, I'm going to do something with my life, didn't know what it was, but, but I, I dreamed big that I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna go and make something of myself. I just couldn't define it at that time. So I graduated high school, went to Clemson University, and, and, and this is how naive I was, man. I had no clue that colleges would reject you. I mean, I, I just assumed, I mean, I didn't know. Uh, I understand, I had no life experience. I had no one in my immediate family talking about college like this. And one of the mistakes I make that I will say to people now, take advantage of the guidance counselors because I did not, I thought I knew it all. I mean, I'm like, I'm going to college, so why do I need to talk to a guidance counselor? So I never did talk to them because I'm like, I'm going to college, and I'm going to Clemson. And God blessed my, my naivety, my foolishness because I literally, only applied to Clemson University. Uh, I sent my SAT scores to Clemson and Carolina because they would do two schools for the same price. So my mother wanted me to go to Carolina. My heart was set on Clemson uh, and only because in junior high I loved soccer and Clemson had the number two soccer team in the nation. That literally what made my choice for Clemson in the seventh grade. So here I am graduating high school, uh, my junior year of high school, I sent my SAT scores to Clemson because I'm going to Clemson. And I got accepted, but I didn't realize until I got to Clemson that they reject like 75% of the applicants. I'm like, everybody goes wherever. So I was blessed to be able to go to Clemson. I majored in mathematical sciences. Uh, didn't know what I wanted to do with that degree. I just loved math. I've always loved math since probably middle school. Um, pledged Kappa, was trying to see there at Clemson. And um, graduated in, in December of 86 and then started my professional career in March of 1987. And I've been blessed to be working professionally since March of 1987. Now I work for a staffing company called MAU, Workforce Solutions. Uh, we staff in a lot of manufacturing environments, so I am currently, not currently, I have been based for the past 10 years at the BMW plant. So we have um, employees that work there on the production line alongside BMW employees. Our job as the on-site management team or leadership team is to manage those employees. Um, we handle all the employee related matters and then we get involved with coaching and counseling and stuff like that. Um, so I've been there for 10 years. Started as really as a supervisor, for the frontline employee group five years and then I got promoted so now I'm one of the managers over the supervisors there on site. Um, what do I love about that job? 
two things. Number one, I, I love working with people. Uh, so my job is pretty much to make sure I take care of those employees there. And I love doing that because I love dealing with people. I love solving problems, people problems. Uh, I, I love helping people do better. And um, I also love the fact that I'm involved in business decisions for my company. We have to make decisions for, from a leadership standpoint as to you know, how do we manage this, this, this client relationship? How do we do what we need to do? So I have the opportunity to build relationships with our client, with the supervisors who report to me, with the contract workforce there at the plant, um, and helping people be successful. Um, one of the greatest joys for me is, is that people trust me to, to come to me with the issues. Some are very confidential, some are very personal, some are even painful. And I can do ministry there uh, without having to take out a Bible and preach, but, but I, I'm able to minister to hundreds of people on a regular basis. And then when they have the opportunity to go from working for my company to working for BMW, um, I've had several tell me thank you. I don't do it for that thank you, but it's, it's very rewarding when some say, hey man, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here. And I always say, you did the work, not me, because I'm not on that assembly line. Uh, my job is just to kind of keep people focused so they can achieve their ultimate goal. So it is very rewarding for me to actually be able to, to, to pour into the lives of people every single day, every single night when I show up at work. Generally with math, um, pretty much almost every problem has a solution. You may have to work harder to find it. Uh, you may need additional resources or additional training to be able to understand the formula you need, the pathway you need to get to a solution. Uh, life is a little bit more complicated than, than, than math problems. But from a general standpoint, um, speaking metaphorically, yeah, um, life is hard. Life is tough. Most of the problems we encounter, if we take the approach that there's, there should be a solution out there and then start looking, preparing ourselves, looking at others for guidance, what resources are available, uh, prayer, you know, how do I, how do, with God's help, how do I move from point A to point B? And what I love to be able to do is to, to be able to say, hey, you know, I'm not going to carry you from point A to point B, but perhaps as we talk together, I can help you see, number one, that there is a pathway to get from point A to point B. You know, so it's not just that you're at a dead end. There is literally a pathway out there. Number two, it might be difficult. It, it might be tough, but it's worth the journey. And then number three, I, I need to be able to encourage you that you need to want to take that, that journey. I, 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 like to be pro I like to be a problem solver. And where I'm not solving your problem, but I'm giving you the tools and the encouragement the guidance to where you can solve those problems. I would say, with God's help, you know, we can get these problems solved. I've been blessed to be a pastor, uh, having spent 20 years in pastoral ministry, uh, literally encouraging people to not give up and to keep looking to God to, to move from point A to point B, because uh, this life is a journey. Uh, the movie metaphor is that, you know, God is the director, he, he's the author of the script, uh, and he, he has the starring role. We are co-stars, or, you know, we're the secondary players. So, so I, I like to be able to tell people or be able to encourage people. So what I would say to people now is that, is that I tell people what I wish someone would have told me, and then maybe I would have listened as well because I was very headstrong. But one of the best things you can do for yourself is to invest in yourself. And that starts with being able to figure out what you're passionate about. I tell young people all the time, find your passion now when you can afford to fail. Um, I, my adult life, I've worked in the public sector and really I've been helping people solve problems all of my adult life. Um, I just never thought about it, literally until the day driving down the road, talking to my wife. I was like, you know, I've actually been involved. I, I know I've been in public service all, all my life, but really I've been dealing with people in crisis, uh, either working in the insurance claims industry, you know, working for social security claims, working now. I, I'm dealing with people in good times and bad times in the ministry. Um, so first I would tell people, find, God wires everyone differently. So God wires you with a passion and you are most passionate when you are plugged into where God wants you to be. It takes some soul searching, it takes some conversation, and sometimes it takes someone else who can see your gifting better than you can. But the sooner you can figure out your purpose, 
the more satisfying your life will be. Uh, I knew I had to go to college. I, I love math, and so, but I had no clue what to do with, with my love of numbers and, and problem solving. Um, and it wasn't until later in life that I, I saw that what I want to spend the rest of my life doing is, is being able to just really pour into people's lives to make their lives, make a difference in their lives. So someone in high school now would tell them, there's something that, that you really are excited about. If not, there's something that you may be just a little bit excited about. You just have never given it a lot of thought because high school is just kind of a day-to-day -day experience. Of it. But really, life is a lot more than what's happening right now. So invest in yourself you know, to make you the best person that you're going to be. And then start thinking about how to get from where you're now to where you are going. Um, I breezed through school. Um, high school was not very challenging. I mean, it was challenging, but I was blessed to be able to do well in high school without having to really apply myself. The downside to that was when I got to college, I didn't know how to study at all. And college was a struggle for me because I didn't know if I went to the library, I'd go to sleep because I never had to study. So I didn't have those, those tools. I wasn't prepared for real life being on my own and having no one tell me to do my homework to make me go to class. I wasn't prepared for those things. I graduated college, I was an average student. And so for me, I was ashamed of the fact that I wasted my potential in college. And so I challenged myself that when I got my start professionally, I was going to excel because, you know, people were expecting more of me than what, they, what I delivered in college. Had I been better prepared in high school, I could have lived up to my expectations in college. So I had, to, I had to change the narrative and say, okay, didn't do so well at Clemson, so now in the professional world, I'm going to excel so that when you look at me professionally, you'll say, okay, that's what I expected of him growing up. So um, young people, every now and then, need to think about, you know, how do I see myself in five years? You know, what do I feel ultimately is my potential? And I say this real quick, true story by the way, I'm, I'm in a job interview for Allstate, my first job out of college. I'm interviewing for Allstate Insurance Company, working in the claims department, Asheville, North Carolina. The man who hired me would be my boss. Back then they asked you the question, what do you see yourself in 10 years? You know, people don't do that anymore. But I had the audacity to answer this question. He says, says Thomas, what do you see yourself in 10 years? I said, it depends. If you hire me 10 years from now, I'll be in the upper echelon of management with your company. If you don't hire me, I'll be in the upper echelon of management with some other company. Now, I'm just a little, little nobody who doesn't have a clue about how to do anything in life. But this is what I tell this man. Um, thankfully, God blessed me, I got hired. And actually within 10 years, I was in high, high management with the company. Um, I wasn't really speaking prophetically. I mean, I wasn't being braggadocious or anything. I think maybe God, God had a plan for me. And in that moment, because I, I stupidly let him speak about what he was planning to do to me because my goal was I'm going to be successful because I wasn't in college. Not because I couldn't be in college, but I wasn't prepared. So take the time to prepare, talk to counselors, talk to parents, Talk to others who have tread this path before to find out what you need to do to be the best version of yourself you can be. And don't sell yourself short because other friends won't be, you know, won't be on your journey because there are people who will only be with you for a season and that's okay. But at the end of the day, you owe it to yourself to be the person God has called you to be. He's created you to be. He's destined you to be. But if you don't cooperate with his plan, you wind up living with regret. Never be ashamed of your past because everyone's got one and it's not how you start the race, it's how you finish that counts. So my name is Thomas Jurgen. once a Raider, always a Raider.